and then we can have a look at this task 9 about resistance. So we have a resistor, we have a voltage drop to volts. Uh, once again we have some aluminum conductor uh, with a um, yeah, not so large cross section as before but still quite large cross section. So some cable that you could use at your home to connect um, I don't know, the fridge or also some, some lighting system. Um, and 80 meters is the length. So some larger room, maybe like this one here. And the specific conductivity is given here, not with um, 37 as we calculated in the exercise before, but with 36. But as discussed yesterday, if you check different sources, if you check different tables, you will find different values. It depends on how pure the copper or the aluminum is, um, what specific um, type of aluminum and copper and so on this is. And so now the question is, what is the current amplitude and what is then maybe also the current density inside this conductor? So ideas to calculate this. There's one. Yeah, we can use the formula that uh, resistance is voltage divided by current, and we know the we, we know the voltage drop, um, and we could calculate the resistance. How can we calculate the resistance? Same same, same formula as we used before. So um, here I've used gamma for the conductivity. Um, typically, I don't know, typically this kappa is, mm -hmm. uh, they, they use here sigma, uh, so there are, there are many different um, ways to write this conductivity. I, I, I'm in electric, electromagnetics, typically this kappa is used, but we can also use gamma. So here we have length divided by gamma, which is the same as kappa before, and the cross-section area. So then we have resistance, we can insert this here. We have the voltage, we can calculate the current. So current, as discussed, is voltage divided by resistance. And how do we get current density? This J. Current divided by cross section area. Okay, so we can insert all the stuff and say this is 18 meter divided by this 36 um, 1 over ohm meter and 1 over millimeter square, and also insert this cross section area of 2.5 square millimeters. And it's very convenient here that all the units will directly cancel. We will end up with ohm. And for the number calculation, I'm once again using octave here. So length is 18. Uh, gamma in this case is 36 if we stay with the chosen units and the cross section area is 2.5 and then so our resistance will be length divided by gamma divided by the area and it will be 0 0.20 which sounds reasonable um, cable is not too long quite large cross section area okay so then if we insert the values into this equation, we have 2 volts divided by uh, 0 0.2 ohm. Ohm is the same as volt divided by ampere. Volts will cancel each other. We will end up with ampere. And 2 divided by 0 0.2 will be 10. So we get 10 ampere. And if we insert this here, 10 ampere divided by 2.5 square millimeter. Um, four amps per square four, four, exactly, we get 4 ampere per square millimeter. And um, yeah, this is also something reasonable. I'm, I'm, to be honest, I'm not an expert in electrical installations. Um, I, I don't know for 
which type of wire and material and bus bar and so on you can have which current densities but this is probably not not too much for this type of wire um, this would be okay of course now from the resistance and or from the current and voltage that we have calculated and yeah, so we could now also calculate power um, we have not, not yet discussed this in the lecture but uh, m maybe a little bit it's voltage it's voltage times current exactly and so if we insert these values we get 2 volts times 10 ampere so we get 20 watt and so now 20 watt is the power that is dissipated let's say the power that is lost inside the cable and that will heat up the cable and so now you can imagine okay 20 watts is not too much but it is something and it depends on what is the surrounding of the cable is, is the surrounding able to dissipate this heat and spread it into the environment and if you have the, the 18 meter cable also wound onto a reel and if it's isolated somewhere um, and if you for a longer time uh, let's say 24 7 heat it up with 20 watts then it will also get hot over time and it might destroy the cable um, yeah so if you think about electrical power installations you you will usually find standards and so on that will um, define a maximum current density within the cable so that the cable will not uh, produce excess heat and will not burn or burn something else uh, will not uh, destroy itself